so far we have been working with the time domain we worked with the system and time domain so we have seen the relation of the autocorrelation and what have you now we look at the spectral characteristics of the system response we would love to work <coughs> sorry would like to work with the free transform because integration is difficult in time we have to use the convolution and the convolution has the integration so to get around that we're going to convert the input signal into its equivalent Fourier transform uh, as you can see here that um, if the input is represented in sparse spectral density the system now can be represented in its, its uh, transfer function this is the impulse response but we can also represent the system using its uh, uh, its transfer function and then we can say that the output and the input has frequency domain relation now this is being capital because it's a random process and frequency it's going to be x of omega or x of f similarly the output is going to be y of omega all right so we're saying if the input is white sense stationary and the system is linear time invariant the output is also going to be time invariant uh, sorry it's going to be white sense stationary and x and y jointly are going to be jointly white sense stationary now in time we represent random processes uh, using autocorrelation however in frequency we use the power density spectrum so how are they related recall that x and y are related by the following y is equal to h times x now because the power is the expectation of kind of a product of x or square of x you can see here now that the relation between the input and the output are a bit different the relation here that the output power spectral density equal to the input power spectral density it's not multiplied by h of omega but rather h of omega squared or the magnitude response of this of, of the transfer function okay and because it's in general complex squared it makes sense to use the square again because we are looking at power rather than just six, uh, the amplitude of the signal uh, we can find the average power at the output of course by integrating the power spectral density of y or equivalently replacing it in terms of the input signal and there is a factor of 1 over 2 by because of uh, the use of omega so this equation is not new we just took everything here and insert it here just we call h of h of omega the transfer function now we can call h the magnitude of h squared as the trans the, pol, the power transfer function so we have the transfer function and now we have the power transfer function if you like uh, so one would argue how did we get this relation to start with so in the next slide we're going to prove how we got the power spectral density relation proof of the power spectral density relation so here is the relation again just reproduce I would like to see how we get to that relation remember everything is based on the convolution relation so um, recall that we have the output power spectral density as the fully transform of the autocorrelation of the output this is a family relation what we will do is just we're going to um, substitute in this relation what we're going to substitute is this so I will take everything here the autocorrelation at the output in terms of the autocorrelation of the input and substitute to get the output power spectral density in that case we'll have triple integration doing uh, a little bit of change of variable so I'll take all these things together and doing change of variable we can separate the integrals the three integrals and now instead of rx x uh, t plus lambda over one minus lambda over two this is going to be the new variable lambda that was just defined before okay going over the of, uh, variable change we have the following integral now we can separate the variables luckily and I just colored them for ease so uh, what is this here we have and what is this what is that okay basically this is the power spectral density of the input signal and here is the impulse response of the system or now with the free transform it becomes a transfer function 
And this is the conjugate of the transform function because of this minus sign. So if you multiply a, a complex quantity by its conjugate, you get h squared. So here we go. So these two together, now this is going to be uh, the kind of orange color or brown, the black and the blue. Now combine these two together, you get h squared. And here is how we prove the relation. Okay, now time for some examples. Uh, we will look at circuit example. Basically, we have an input voltage and then we have inductance and resistance. It says in the question, find the power spectral spectrum and the average power of the response when the input X is white noise. Okay, so if we want to work on the frequency domain, we need to find the equivalent of this transfer function n time. Remember that uh, doing circuit analysis, this is going to be... Um, uh, not a very difficult task. This is going to be J omega L. So now by voltage divider, we'll get R divided by J omega L plus R. If you divide up and down by R, you get the following expression, which can also be um, squared if you want to get the square of that. The magnitude of this complex quantity is going to be 1 over square root of 1 plus omega squared or square over r squared, which is finally equal to this expression. Okay, now we have the transfer function. We know the power spectral density of the white noise. White noise means it's going to be n naught over 2. So here we have the white noise, all right, and here we have the transfer function. If we do a little bit of simplification and math problems, we can write this in a nice way. If we want to find the power, we can find the power from the power spectral density. All right, we're talking about the, the output power. So we have the power spectral density, and we just integrate over that, and the answer is going to be n naught over n naught r over 4l now recall that uh, another way to check that the answer is correct is to uh, use the time relation okay so for white noise from the previous example we know that the output power is going to be n naught over 2 times the area under the square of the curve this is one of the relation we had when we did um, the time domain relations and if you integrate the area here if you integrate h you get n naught times r over 4l which is exactly the same answer this answer is the same the power in time is equivalent to the power in Fourier transform and in the frequency domain and this is the Parseval theorem in this slide we look at the cross power density spectrum between the input and the output. So for the system that has an input of X and the output of Y, how do we relate the cross, call it cross power density? It's cross because it has um, this, uh, sorry, it has X and Y. So the cross power spectral density is related to the input power spectral density uh, by multiplication by the transfer function. And if you want the other power spectral density, yx, the output in terms of the input, then there will be a minus sign here. Uh, this is used when doing um, measurement of power density spectrum. And to understand the meaning of what a cross power spectral density is, you're comparing the input to the output. So in terms of the physical meaning, the power shared, uh, you can use the, the cross spectral density to find the power shared by a given frequency between the two signals. Okay, so you can get that from the power spectral density, the cross power spectral density. It shows you what are the frequency components that are common between X and Y. For the phase part, because this is in general complex, the phase shift between the two signals, okay, you can find the phase difference of the two by looking at the phase of the power spectral density. Are they in phase, out of phase? And this is why there is a minus sign difference between Y, X, and X, Y.
let's do the following example. Uh, it says a stationary random process x of t having an auto collision function given by the following is applied to the following network. So it's applied here and would like to find the following outputs. First, uh, what is the power spectral density at the input? Given the autocorrelation, okay, it's nothing but the free transform. Now we are also told in the question, we're given that this is one of the important pairs, okay, so we will need to use it. If we try to match what we have with here, okay, you'll find that here alpha uh, equals to 4, so we have E exponential minus 4 tau has a free transform of, uh, we said alpha is 4, so we have 8 divided by 16 plus omega squared. And remember there's a factor of 2 here, so we get 16 over 16, right? So and that's shown here. This is how we got the first answer by just direct Fourier transform. Now the second question says find the power transfer function. This is called the power transfer function. Power transfer function. How do you find it? Remember that for the capacitance we have 1 over j omega c. So we have 1 over j omega times 4, which is the capacitance. We have R here, and we have here 1 over j omega times 2. Now, how do you find the relation, the, the transfer function? Okay, H of omega. It's, the, it's a voltage divider. Okay, it's a voltage divider between these. Here is the output, and here is one impedance. We'll combine these in parallel. Okay, so it's the product over the sum. And we can now simplify the answer. So it's going to be 1 over j omega 2 divided by 1 over j omega 2 plus uh, the parallel combination of these two, the product or the sum. So it's going to be uh, this parallel combination together. Uh, it's 1.5 times okay, 1.5 divided by j omega 4 divided by 1.5 plus j omega 4. And then you can simplify this and then take the magnitude square. So the answer now should be 1 plus 36 omega squared over 1 plus 81 omega squared. Now the last part is the easiest part is to find the output power spectral density. It's going to be just a multiplication of the two. I kept the colors green and blue so you can match. That's the end of the problem. The second practice question, it says for a white noise for which the auto collision is given, so this is basically n naught over 2, this is nothing but n naught over 2, is applied to a network with the impulse response given by the following. So what is required is find the network noise output power in one ohm resistor using uh, the following relation we can do here we can do the substitution on the integration because um, we have the delta the delta would simplify things a little bit so remember that for white noise we can simplify the expressions and if you want to find the power then we just uh, the power is will be the auto collision at tau equal to zero that will simplify the analysis. Okay, and then uh, we we'll go from here to here. We we'll just simplify that by tau equal to zero. This is the general autocorrelation, and here is just the power. Now, by direct substitution, uh, we can find uh, with proper integration uh, the final answer to be 9 over 25, 256 times 10 raised to the power 2, and the answer to this should be the amount of power you have. For the output power pixel density, okay, which is easier to find, we'll find the full transform of these expressions. H. And then we have 
the Fourier transform of the power spectral density is just a constant and not over 2, which is 0 to the power minus 2. You multiply them. Okay, here's a, a problem for you to try. White noise with power density not over 2 equals to 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 watts per hertz is applied to an ideal low pass filter gain equal to 1 with bandwidth W, radians per second. Find W so that the output average noise power is 15 watts. Usually we give you the input in the system and we ask you for the output power. In this example, we are giving you the, the power at the output and would like you to design this low pass filter. It's an ideal one, so the only design is to find its bandwidth. Okay. So please try to freeze this because the answer is be sh will be shown in a second and try to find what the answer is. Share your answer uh, at the comment section. Okay. So uh, the power equals to the input power spectral density times uh, the power transfer function. And we have a factor of one over two by because we are using omega here rather than hertz. That's from the original equation. Okay, the power transfer function is equal to one, but only between the limit of the low pass filter. Recall that the low pass filter look like this. So we have minus W and plus W. This is equal to one. This is why the range of the integration now changes from minus infinity to minus W to plus W. And it's just one, so it does not show up here. And if you if you execute the integration, this is a constant outside, and you get 2w for, from the integration. And here is the final expression. This must equal to 15 watts. And if you solve now for w, you get w equal to the following expression. Thank you for your time.